Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Good Sunday afternoon to you, FCC, our online faith family, and to everyone who's watching from wherever you might be watching from. Good Sunday to you and welcome to church. Amen. I hope you've had a great day. Uh, we're certainly having a good day. I'm, I'm aware of all that is happening around us. There's so much uh, going on in the news, so much calamity, so many reports of death, this virus on, uh, on the rise again. Uh, but listen, I've got good news today. I've got good news. Isaiah 46 declares that God established the end from the beginning. That means that nothing that's happening on this earth has caught God by surprise. That everything that is happening on this earth is happening within the context of what God has allowed and what God has spoken. This means that the church of the living God should be able to tap into the spirit of God and have a right now word for God's people today. And that's what I believe we have. Today, we're going to talk about for just a few minutes, what is Jacob's trouble? And does it belong to us? What is Jacob's trouble? And we got a subtopic today. The subtopic is the restoration of all things. I believe the revelation from the word today is going to be a tremendous blessing to you and help us get through these times that we're living in. Amen. So I want to ask you to grab your Bible and a notepad, prepare to follow along with us, write these scriptures down so that you can study them out uh, through the uh, re remainder of the week. And uh, let's talk about for just a few minutes, what is Jacob's trouble and the restoration of all things? If you'll grab your materials, we'll be back in just a few moments. <music> Hey Amen. Welcome back, FCC. If you don't mind, let's get right into the word of God. Uh, today, I tell you, there's so much going on. If there was ever a time that we need to hear from God, that time is now. The New Testament church, I believe the New Testament church has been called to be led by the spirit of God. That's Romans 8, 14, has been called to be led by God's spirit and to remain relevant to have spiritual relevance in the midst of what's happening today. Today is not the time to be talking about Mary had a little lamb. Uh, we need to hear what is God saying to the church in this hour. We talked about in the opening of the broadcast that nothing on earth is happening outside of God's uh, word, that the word that God has declared from the very beginning. The word says that God declared the end from the beginning. Let's take a look at that together. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 46, verses 9 and 10. Isaiah 46, verse 9 and 10, using a new King James, the scripture reads, remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. Verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning. And from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Amen, FCC. I love the word of God because whatever we need, whatever answer we need, it's in the word. Isaiah 46, God declares, I am God. There is no other God. I don't have any competition and my counsel is going to stand. I've declared the end from the beginning and nobody's going to interrupt that. So I want to assure the church today. I want to I want to encourage you that God, as far as his people, is con uh, people are concerned, God has us in the palm of his hands. There's nothing happening on this earth outside of God's authority, outside of his word. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, God told us long time ago, he said, in the last days, perilous times are going to come. God told us this in advance. Amen. So let's move forward. Last week, we talked about the church. We talked about the church at FCC. We learned last week that the church is God's 
church. The church is a living organism. It is the ecclesia, which simply means the called out ones, the assembly, the assembly, and that whatever God's going to do on the earth will be done through the body of Christ. It'll be done through the body of his son. Amen. The Bible declares that Jesus is the head of the church, and we know how God feels about his son, Jesus. So I want to encourage you today, don't sleep on the church. Amen. Don't come against the church. That's the wrong thing to do in this hour. So listen, in the midst of pure chaos, in the midst of a second wave of a novel virus, fights over mask or no mask, societal breakdown, hospital overload, record deaths, all that's going on, the church is where we need to be. The church is where God's going to speak the church is where God's going to reveal himself because that's his vehicle in the earth, the body of Christ. Amen. And today, God has given us a righteous, relevant word for today. So for the next few minutes, for the next 10 to 15 minutes, I want to talk to you about Jacob's trouble. What is Jacob's trouble? And as a subtopic, the restoration of all things. Amen. FCC, God used regular ordinary men to speak speak his word, to record his word. He, he spoke by his spirit through ordinary men. Jeremiah was one such man. He was a prophet of God. And God literally says to Jeremiah, I want you to write this down. So let's look at what God said through the prophet Jeremiah about a future day. If you would turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 30, we're going to read verse 1 through 11 together. FCC, we're reading Jeremiah chapter 30, verses 1 through 11, using a new King James version. The word, verse one, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, thus speaks the Lord God of Israel saying, write in a book for yourself all the words that I have spoken to you. For behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will bring back from captivity my people Israel and Judah, says the Lord, and I will cause them to return to the land that I gave their fathers and they shall possess it. Verse four, now these are the words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judah. For thus says the Lord, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear and not peace. Ask now and see whether a man is ever in labor with a child. So why do I see every man with his hands on his loins like a woman in labor and all faces turned pale? Verse seven, alas, for that day is great so that none is like it. And it is the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. For it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from your neck and will burst your bonds. Foreigners shall no more enslave them, but they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up for them. Verse 10, therefore do not fear, O my servant Jacob, says the Lord, nor be dismayed, O Israel. For behold, I will save you from afar and your seed from the land of their captivity. Jacob shall return, have rest and be quiet, and no one shall make him afraid. Verse 11, for I am with you, says the Lord, to save you, though I make a full end of all nations where I have scattered you, yet I will not make a complete end of you, but I will correct you in justice and will not let you go altogether unpunished. Praise the Lord, FCC. We see this prophetic word from the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 30. In verse number three, he says, For behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will bring back from captivity my people Israel and Judah. Remember, Israel was split up into two kingdoms, the northern and the southern kingdom. God says, I'm going to bring back my people Israel from captivity. Then Jeremiah goes on in verse number seven, he says, Because there's a day coming, a time of 
Jacob's trouble is coming. He says, I'm going to save Jacob, but Jacob is going to go through some trouble. He's going to go through some trouble. Now, today's message is titled, What is Jacob's Trouble? What is that that we just located here at Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7, and does it belong to us? To better be answer that question, we need to understand a little bit more about who Jacob is. We know the patriarch, uh, the, the, the chain of command. We have Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob. The father Abraham, the promised son Isaac, and then Jacob, his son. So let's study a little further about Jacob. To do that, let's go back to Genesis chapter 32, and we're going to read verses 9 and 10, and we're going to find out how Jacob got his name and why his name was changed. Gen Genesis chapter 32. FCC, we're reading Genesis 32 verses 9 and 10 using a New King James Version. Verse 9 reads, Then Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, Return to your country and to your family, and I will deal well with you. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and all of the truth which you have shown your servant. For I crossed over this Jordan with my staff, and now I have become two companies. Amen, FCC. So we see here Jacob identifies himself here in Genesis chapter 32, verses 9 and 10. Jacob says, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac. So Jacob identifies himself as the third in line, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God says, return to your country, to return to your people, and I'll deal well with you. But Jacob is lamenting. He says, I've allowed the kingdom to be split into two kingdoms. So Jacob is lamenting. For the sake of time, we're going to skip down to verse 24. Genesis 32 and verse 24. FCC, we're reading verses 24 through 28 of Genesis 32. Verse 24 reads, Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's, Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Verse 26, and he said, let me go for the, for the day breaks. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he, the type of Christ, the angel said to him, Jacob, what is your name? And he said, Jacob, verse 28, the angel said to Jacob, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Praise the Lord, FCC. Listen, FCC, listen, stay. Let's stay with this, with this train of thought, because there's so much revelation here. As we know, Old Testament scripture is full of types and shadows of Yeshua, of Jesus Christ Himself. So when we see the angel wrestling with Jacob, the capital He, that's a that's a referring to the the the, the Christ of Fanny, the the type and shadow of Jesus Christ Himself. And we there's so many different hidden truths in the scripture, but I want to stay focused on Jacob for the sake of today's message. Today's message. We see here that God changed Jacob's name in Genesis chapter 32 and verses 27 and 28. He says, I'm going to change your name for you have wrestled with God. You have wrestled with God and with men and you have prevail. So God gives a definite reason, a clear reason why he changed his name. His name was changed from Jacob to Israel. Now, listen, stay with me, FCC. Jacob, the name Jacob actually means surplanter or trickster or defrauder. Yeah, that's a whole story about that with Jacob and Esau. Uh, it means heel catcher. That's that's a message for another day. But Jacob had a name that every time it was called, it meant trickster. It means it, it meant someone who was trying to get over, somebody who was trying to be slick. Listen, there's a huge revelation here. So why would Jeremiah the prophet 700 or so years later, later, why would he prophesy and use the name Jacob when Jacob's name has been changed to Israel, when he's he's no longer identified by the trickster name? Here's the revelation. Here's a revelation. God is saying through the prophet Jeremiah that any believer, got to remember, Jeremiah's prophets, prophesying to believers, to Israel, that any believer that wants to be a trickster, 
Any believer that wants to continue to try and be a part of the world and God's kingdom at the same time, any believer that wants to be slick, any believer who says they're saved, but they're beholding to systems of racism, of, of oppression, systems, uh, systems of extortion, systems of violent oppression, greed, abuse, any believer who calls themselves a Christian, and you are agreeing with evil, you are going to go through Jacob's trouble. You're, that's who Je Jeremiah is prophesying to in this future day. Those believers who claim to be saved, but you're partnering with evil. Listen, God is God. Love is love. The Bible says to love your neighbor as yourself. You can't claim to be a Christian and hate your neighbor. You can't be a Christian and hate your neighbor. So Jacob's trouble is coming on all of those who profess to be saved, profess to be Christians, but you've got wickedness in your heart. You've got hatred in your heart. You're trying to be a part of the world and uh, you're trying to be like Jacob used to be. You're trying to be a supplanter. You're trying to be a slick rascal. You're trying to be slick. Jacob had to wrestle with God until that slickness got out of his heart. Hallelujah. He had to wrestle with God until those bad ways, until he let them go. Listen, there's somebody listening to this message. You need to uh, tarry. Where I come from in the old church, they tarried with God. Some of you need to tarry with God. You need to let, you need to do whatever you got to do. Jacob said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. Amen. If it means coming to church five days a week, whatever you got to do to get your breakthrough, it would be a good idea to do that in these times that we're living in. Amen. We're going to confirm what we just read with New Testament scripture. If you would, let's turn to James chapter five. FCC, we're in James chapter five. We're going to read verses one through six using the New Living Translation. Verse one reads, look here, you rich people, weep and groan with anguish because of all the terrible troubles. There it is. That's Jacob's trouble ahead of you. Your wealth is rotting away and your fine clothes are moth eaten rags. Your gold and silver are corroded. The very wealth you were counting on will eat away at your flesh like fire. This corroded treasure you have hoarded will testify against you on the day of judgment. Verse four, for listen, hear the cries of the field workers whom you have cheated of their pay. The cries of those who harvest your fields have reached the ears of the Lord of heaven's armies. You have spent your years on earth in luxury, satisfying your every desire. You have fattened yourselves for the day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed innocent people who do not resist you. Amen. Listen, FCC, to our online faith family, and to those of you who are listening from wherever you might be listening from, receive the word of the Lord today. I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you're receiving what God is saying to the church in this moment. This is a right now word from God. It'll help you understand what is happening in the world today. The time of Jacob's trouble has begun. It's not full blown. It'll be full blown once the church is taken out of the earth. Oh, but it has begun. God is shaking this earth. We see here in James chapter five, he says, look here, you rich people. God is speaking to a particular group, people who claim to be believers, but they're cheating. They're cheating folks. They're treating people wrong. They're doing all manner of evil and that all for the sake of money. God says, weep and groan because your trouble has come. Your troubles are coming upon you now. Listen, FCC, Jacob's trouble is not for the believer that's in line with God, that's in faith, that's doing things God's way. I'm going to prove that in just a second as we race to our close. This is for those, again, who are trying to be the old Jacob. They're trying to be slick. They're trying to pretend like they're for patriotism, like they're doing it for country. They're doing it in the name of country when it's really in the name of hatred. You're not fooling God. Y'all not fooling God. God sees you. He knows what the red hat means. 
He knows what that means. He knows what's in your heart. You're not fooling God. And God says, Jacob's trouble is coming upon you for your wickedness that's in your heart. James chapter five, your 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 clothes are moth eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded. Hey, church, receive this. Don't, don't get in fear if you're in faith, if you're part of God's family. But listen, there's financial trouble coming on this earth. There's financial shaking coming to this earth. You can rest assured of that. It's happening even even as we speak. Listen, he says, the cries of the field workers whom you've cheated, the cries of them, they've reached my ears. They've reached my ears and I'm going, the Lord of heaven's armies, I'm going to deal with this, not in the by and by, I'm going to deal with this right now. Jacob's trouble is on the earth. Amen. Let me show you that if you're doing things the right way, if you're not trying to be slick, if you're not trying to be a trickster, that Jacob's trouble is not for you. Let's turn to 1 John chapter 4. Je I'm sorry, 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. FCC, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. We're going to use a New Living Translation. Verse 4 reads, For every child of God defeats this evil world. And we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen, FCC. I got about four and a half minutes. I'm, I'm getting excited as we are, are closing out today. First John 5, 4, is God double talking? No, he's not double talking. In first John chapter five, God says, who for every child of God defeats this evil world. What, what, what was this about Jacob's trouble? God is talking to two different groups. Jacob's trouble belongs to the tricksters. It belongs to the slick ones. The ones who, again, are trying to think they're fooling God. God. No, nobody's fooling God. We're not getting by. God is writing it all down. God has got record of it. God sees. He see, We just read in James where God says, the cries of the laborers whom you've kept back the wages have come up to my ears. Listen, you think you got away, but God was keeping up with the pay records. God was writing it down. Yeah, for those who belong to God, every child of God defeats this evil world. And who is he that overcomes this world? But he that believes that Jesus is the son of God. Listen, now, see, I feel the Holy Ghost because we're living in a time. Listen, the coronavirus is real. People are dying for real. There's something that's been released in the air. There's a death decree that has been spoken over the earth. And if you don't know how to get in faith, you can get attacked. You can get, you can succumb come to this. Listen, when we take, how do you, how do you believe that Jesus is the son of God? Well, Jesus told us every time we get together, he says, I want you to do this and do this often. Do it in remembrance of me. Listen, when we take communion, that's believing that Jesus is the son of God. Healing is released in our bodies. Yes. Healing that destroys the virus. Amen. I believe that we take communion at our church every Sunday. We take it every Wednesday. And we believe that as we partake in the bread and the, the broken body of Jesus and the blood of Christ, that healing is released in our bodies. Divine health. Amen. When you pay your tithes and offerings, we don't pay them to a man. We don't pay them to a building. We offer them to our high priest, Jesus Christ. That's Hebrews chapter 6 and chapter 7. He's a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. When we give our offerings to God and say, God, we want to support the gospel of Jesus. We want to support the preaching of Jesus. When we give the, our tithes and offerings, Jesus takes that offering and he offers it up before the Father on your behalf. And the Bible says that the blessing comes on our household after the order of Melchizedek and it sustains us. It keeps us. It protects us from the evil one. The evil's not able to come in and just take our money and take things from us because the blessing of Abraham is on our households. Amen. Listen, when we study the word day and night, that's believing in Jesus Christ. We find good success. That's Joshua 1 8. If you'll study the word, meditate on the word, mutter the word day and night, you're going to have good success. If we believe Jesus, Jesus, we overcome this world, and that's even the virus. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, we're done. Our time is up. I want to give you one last scripture, and we're going to be talking about this for all of 20, uh, quite a bit during 2022. But the, the subtopic of today's message was the time, uh, uh, the restoration of all things. 
There's a couple of things that's getting ready to happen that's happening on the earth now. As we see Jacob's trouble increase more and more as we race towards the end of time, God has said that before we leave this earth, he promised to make some things right. God promised to make some things right on the earth, not when we get to heaven. So the restoration of all things is getting ready to take place. God is going to restore some things. Let's confirm that with scripture. If you would turn with me to Acts, please, the book of Acts, and we're going to go to Acts chapter 3. Faith family, we're reading Acts chapter 3, verse 18 through 21, using a New Living Translation. Verse 18 reads, But God was fulfilling what all the prophets had foretold about the Messiah, that he must suffer these things. Verse 19, Now repent of your sins and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped away. Then times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord, and he will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah. Verse 21, for Jesus must remain in heaven until the time for the final restoration of all things, as God promised long ago through his holy prophets. Glory. Ooh, praise the Lord, FCC. I don't know if y'all are getting this explosive word that's being released uh, in, this, in this room today. God says here in Acts chapter 3, he says, Jesus came and suffered many things as it was foretold. And he says, Jesus, he says, repent so that your sins can be wiped away and, and that times of refreshing can come from the presence of the Lord. Then he goes on to say, I'm going to send Jesus to you again at the appointed time. But right now he's in heaven and he can't come down. My God, he can't come down until what the prophets have spoken comes to pass. What have the prophets spoken? The prophets have spoken that there's going to be a shaking and that there's going to be a second exodus, another exodus, that there's going to be restitution, that there's going to be restoration, that we're coming out of Egypt a lot, one more time. That's the prophet Haggai, that we're coming out of Egypt one more time and that God's going to restore his people. Listen, we're, my time is completely gone. We're not leaving this earth broke, busted, and raggedy. That's not how we're leaving the earth, but we're leaving the earth a glorified body. We're getting ready for the greatest revival the world has ever seen. God is going to flood the church with, with, with the harvest. He's going to flood the church and the church is going to be beautified. It's going to be a church without spot or wrinkle. It's going to be a glorified church and it's going to be so awesome until one day God is just going to take the church on out of the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, the word restoration in the Greek is the word apocatastasis, apocatastasis. And in the Hebrew, it is shalom, shalom. Both of these words mean to be made perfect, to be made whole, to, be, to return to its former state. It means to recompense. It means restitution. It means God's going to restore. Get ready. Get ready. Get Get ready for restoration. Listen, as the as we as these days move forward, you're going to see two trains working in the earth, two two tracks working. You're going to see Jacob's trouble increase for the wicked ones, the slick ones, and for those who are really a part of the body of Christ. Restoration has arrived. Amen. Listen, I've preached. I, I, I'm out of time. I could preach for another hour. My cup is full today. I pray you receive this word. Listen, we're praying for our brothers and sisters in Haiti. I am praying as a minister of God. Listen, somebody, I'm praying that God would send somebody to that region, to that area that will break up that atmosphere, that demonic oppression that's over Haiti and begin to lift up the, the, the banner of Jesus Christ. Christ over Haiti. We're praying that God would send the prophets, send the evangelists, send the missionaries to Haiti, and that God would begin to minister to his people in Haiti like never before. Thank you for listening today. We love you. We do these messages in love for whoever might run across them uh, online and to our church. Amen. So thank you for listening. Uh, as we go, I never do this. If, we, if this message is being a blessing to you, if you're receiving from FCC, you're welcome 
welcome to sow a seed online to FCC and receive the, the blessing that's on our church. We love you and we'll see you all next time. <music>